Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Talking Cardboard. My name is Corey. As always, if you like the content you see here on the channel, consider subscribing. We really do appreciate it. As you can see here on today's video, we are taking a look at the brand new game by Smirk and Dagger Games. One to five players, plays in about 50 minutes. Very, very creepy and getting us ready for the Halloween season. This game is The Night Cage. The Night Cage, like I said, plays one to five players in about 50 minutes. So it is a fast playing tile placement cooperative game where you and your friends are in a dark labyrinth trying to find your way out, grasping onto this candle light. And as the wax burns down your hand and the light goes out, as soon as a tile goes dark, that tile is discarded out of the game forever. So it's an ever changing puzzle that you and your friends are trying to collaborate on and trying to uh, strategically beat the game before time runs out. Out. How this game plays is very, very simple. This candle here will be filled with tiles at the beginning of the game, and when it's your turn, you are either choosing to stay in a room or move your pawn to an adjacent room to discover more tiles throughout the labyrinth. As you are discovering more tiles, you are drawing it from this candlestick here and placing it next to you, and some tiles will have a key on it that you can collect, and once you and all of your friends have collected a key and brought it back to a, uh, the same gate to unlock the gate, and uh, leave the labyrinth, that is how you win the game. But if the candlestick runs dry and all of your lights go out and you have not all gotten a key and gotten to that gate yet to unlock it, then you lose the game collectively. So yes, it is a cooperative game. It has high levels of strategy, but it's simple to play on the surface. You will also discover tiles that have these cracks on it that if you leave the cracked tile, they will flip over to become a pit that you can fall into. And falling into a pit isn't necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes you can choose to fall into a pit on purpose. And what that'll do is you can choose to either fall side to side down the pit or you can fall you know, top to bottom down the pit. Whichever direction you fall, on your next turn, you can land on any one of those blank spots that are within that column or row that you decided to fall. So it's kind of a quick way to travel throughout the, the labyrinth too. Why travel quickly throughout the labyrinth? Well, like I said, the first the first reason would be to uh, try to discover the keys quickly and get back to those gates to get out before time runs out. So that timer is definitely a pressing uh, mechanism in this game. But the other reason to go quickly too and to uh, try to jump around the map the best you can is that there are different tiles that have monsters on them as well. And when a monster pops up, as soon as you go into their line of sight or leave the monster's line of sight, then they will attack. If they attack and hit you, you flip your character card over and you are lights out until one of your teammates can run over and light your candle for you. And basically all that lights out means is that anytime you leave a tile, it disappears forever into darkness because you don't have any candlelight uh, anymore and you are blindly searching throughout the labyrinth without seeing what that next tile is before you walk into it. So then you draw a new tile and place it underneath um, the spot that you had just gone to, not knowing what tile that is. If it happens to be a monster tile and you walk right into it, you know, thematically your candle is out so you can't really see a monster coming up. If you land into that tile with a monster, you automatically get hit by that monster and have to discard three tiles off of the stack. And that is your, like I said, your timer for losing the game. So you really don't wanna get hit by these monsters. You don't wanna run into monsters blindly because then your candlestick is burning down faster and faster. Uh, there's different bosses and different monster types throughout the game. The main monster in the game is called the Wax Eaters. So they actually catch you and eat the wax off of your candle, so then you have less and less candlestick to work with for the rest of the game uh, thematically. So that is really cool. And the theme is just just really creepy. Uh, it, it's not overly creepy because it is kind of abstracted, but uh, if, if you get into your own head a little bit, it definitely has that creepy, creepy Halloween type of theme to it, which I really, really do enjoy. Uh, another thing to go over is that the board is an endless loop. So if you get to the edge of the board, you actually travel to the opposite side on the other side of the board. So it is an endless loop, no matter what direction you're heading, you just pop out to the other side because it is just 
like I said, just an ever-changing labyrinth that the walls disappear and change and, and switch direction as soon as it goes into darkness is when the labyrinth changes. So you're trying to keep things illuminated also because there's only a set number of key tiles and a set number of gate tiles in the game. So if you allow those to go dark, either by accident or, or by choice, if all of them go dark and get discarded out of the game, that's another way to automatically lose the game. The tiles that you keep illuminated, obviously if your light's out, only the tile you stand on is technically illuminated, but in, normally if your candle is still lit, that all the tiles orthogonally adjacent to you remain lit. And that is the way to try to keep the board state in a way to uh, keep tiles onto the board. Because as soon as you leave a tile and uh, the tiles that are no longer orthogonally adjacent go dark, they get discarded off the board forever and they never get reintroduced back into the game for the rest of the game. So yeah, plays one to five players, plays great at all player counts. If you're playing a two player game, each player takes on uh, the role of two characters and the characters don't vary at all. They're just different colors and you're playing the game the same no matter what player count. I found it, you know, a very difficult game to beat. The bosses and the different monsters really throw a whole loop into the mix and the strategy behind which tiles to keep illuminated and which tiles to let fall into darkness to get discarded is really a neat puzzle and an ever-changing puzzle and will be different every time. The game itself really hasn't gotten old yet. Uh, like I said, it, is, it does have enough variability to where the game is different each and every time you play. And it's one of those games that, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna pull out and bring it to the table each and every, uh, for each and every game group and um, you know every weekend or every time we play. It's not one of those style games because it is more of the um, abstract puzzle style game. But when I'm in the mood to play an abstract puzzle, this, this is definitely one of the games that I will be first to grab because it definitely does what it does very well. So if you're into abstract puzzle games and you really like uh, thinking and trying to beat the game board cooperatively with really simple tile placement but providing unique strategies each and every time, then the Night Cage would definitely be a game for you. Into my overall ratings of the game, I am giving this game an 8 out of 10. Really surprised me. A very, very good game right out of the box. Uh, really grabbed me in. Uh, not only the theme, but the gameplay itself is very intriguing. Like I said, if you like abstract strategy games you um, and puzzle games, you will really enjoy this. It's nothing too extraordinary. Uh, it's not super unique. It's not like an earth shattering game that is just changing the entire genre within gaming itself or anything like that. It's, it's, it's not a groundbreaking game, but the theme appealed to me, uh, very unique and cool theme. And uh, the puzzle itself is unique and different enough that it provides a layer of different strategies that most other games do not provide in the puzzle genre. So that does it for my review of The Night Cage. I hope you all enjoyed. Leave comments below if you've gotten a chance to play The Night Cage yet and what your thoughts are on it. I know it is a brand new game that just got released a couple weeks ago at Gen Con, but if you were one of the lucky ones to get your hands on it, um, definitely let me know what you think. I myself was not able to go to Gen Con this year, but one of my local game stores did have a couple copies in stock that they had brought back from Gen Con, so I was lucky enough to get my hands on this. The artwork is amazing, uh, you know, on the box, the box really grabbed me and pulled me in. The theme is really cool. The, the puzzle nature of it is really neat as well, and uh, it provides everything that I was looking for this game to do for me. Plays really well at all player counts, played it a bunch at two player and still plays very well, and it plays in a short, short period of time. So this game really did everything I expected it to do, and then some. So very pleased with the Night Cage, and until next time, you all have fun gaming.